what are your travel plans? Where will you arrive in the UK? What country are you traveling from? Which company are you traveling with? What is the flight number, train number or ship name that you will arrive on? Which countries have you been in or will be in the for the 10 days before coming in the UK? Did you transit through this country by a plane, train, without passing border control? Have you visited or will you visit any islands in this country during the 10 days before you arrive in the UK? Who are when we arrive? How do borders transform our cultural identities? What is the connection between the arrival of culture and physical arrival and is it even possible to arrive in the content of new travel well hello my name is margarita clover and uh, this is uh, the entering lecture the opening lecture of uh, the very experimental project which is called arrival we are glad to welcome you in the borderlands Actually, now we are in between France and UK, currently crossing uh, La Manche or the English Channel uh, underwater in Euro Channel. Uh, it took us more than three months to, to prepare uh, this travel. Uh, it required uh, vaccination. Well, both with Sputnik and um, European vaccine, um, Western vaccine like Pfizer or Johnson Johnson, it required uh, a surprisingly new measure for PCR or antigen test we had to take. Regardless, we have vaccination. It required both uh, European and uh, UK visas. It required a lot of bureaucracy and uh, this bureaucracy and the whole experience of crossing the border. Um, this is our framework, our field and, and method of, of looking into this new world of travel with this different, very complicated, sometimes quite dusty or very unclear lands. So, um, as I said, the arrival is a very experimental project which uh, made possible because of uh, coronavirus. Because in coronavirus, under coronavirus, academia was taking out classrooms, taking out uh, our usual cozy intellectual space. But it was taking out uh, not necessarily to our homes and, and private premises, but somewhere else. And, uh, well, our idea that it should be taken where the critical contribution of uh, academics and critically thinking intellectual uh, is, is important that in, in, in those processes and institutions where it can be um, of help, as, as, as here, uh, in this very complicated situation of uh, border crossing, which is not possible for everybody, which is, can be which can be quite risky for a lot of people, and uh, like um, except our lecture, um, the channel already took uh, its attention recently because of um, refugee. Refugees died, 27 people, uh, just a few days ago, and in the cold water um, of the channel. So um, our project, uh, their arrival, there will be three uh, a series of three performative lectures uh, for exploring changing relations between space, body, and culture in the context of uh, new travel. And as you know, as a result of COVID and partly Brexit, the new travel not only causes anxiety and safety crisis, but also opens up a broader debate on how body and culture are connected and liminal sites of uh, borders. 
each of the lectures uh, is in this it's in distance it, sorry is an interdisciplinary travel through time and space um, and we are traveling at the moment and a mix of anthropological research history of culture and performance art the content and choice of location for every lecture are fundamentally um, interconnected um, in this lecture as I said Uh, Bode is not just subject, but also a method of seeing current processes and uh, well, um, increasing rates of social inequality and uh, issues with freedom and human rights at um, a more general level. Um, so this lecture obviously will not be just history of borders, although it, it's quite important to mention that um, when we say borders, we don't mean like uh, geographical or, or, or natural borders, and we don't mean just procedure, but uh, we, we mean ritual and uh, state of uh, transition. Well, like, a, like rightly, it was rightly put by Donna and Wilson in 1999, borders are zones of cultural production, space of meaning making and meaning and meaning breaking. So this lecture is especially devoted to cultural production of borders um, under COVID. And as I said, it was extremely complicated to get here and uh, not everyone could, could make it. That's why this lecture, I hope, I hope to make it rich with ethnographic uh, materials and give a voice not only to me and uh, my team currently filming it, but to um, other people and, and their stories. And um, um, the state of coronavirus is also critically important for this lecture. And, uh, I will actually continue here with um, uh, a citation from Santiago Cruzada um, uh, that was an article for Social Anthropology Journal Urgent Issue on Coronavirus uh, and uh, written in May 2020 when the pandemic just, just, just started. Uh, so what Cruzada says, uh, at the biological level, Experts describe the new coronavirus as a species of uh, living organism that doesn't fit homogeneously with a taxon, but could be understood as a specific multiplying, mul sorry, multiplier uh, forming and enacting its identity with others. Since a characteristic, he continues, of the pandemic virus is that it needs to multiply as an entity through humans to survive, we could certainly speak of trans-species entanglements between, but not only, virus and humans. And finally, from Cruzada, um, human bodies are not the historical product of linear organic development, but the result of symbiosis and making and mixing between species that, that create new forms of life. So um, what coronavirus brought to us um, is the um, idea of, of rather symbiosis, but not not separation and not isolation. And the second paradox um, is actually, well, coronavirus is a species, an entity. It doesn't uh, respect human uh, borders, though the one of the main means to fight coronavirus uh, is to make uh, borders tricky, which is not aimed at, 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 at human. At, uh, sorry, at, at virus, but rather, rather it has uh, like strict impact on, on human beings. So um, uh, to continue with these ideas of symbiosis and um, uh, us human moving uh, and um, um, how What, what can be treated, not just coronavirus, but who can be treated 
as an essential member of community and who can be treated as a threat for for the community i would just bring several cases of um, ethnography and uh, actually i would start um, with a story of myself that was um, my entry to this topic uh, of um, the new travel and uh, new borders so um, um, the 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 content the context of the story is that um, actually it was uh, the the story of me passing international borders first time after the pandemic started um, in uh, November uh, 2020 uh, for professional purposes when I was invited by my um, American colleagues we were working hardly um, on the publication together and we thought uh, like us seeing to, uh, each other working together that would help so they were in Finland and they invite me uh, to come and uh, as we learned Finland um, just um, introduced new line new new, new rules uh, of of travel so visa and invitation wasn't enough uh, one had to get a special permission at the border uh, in my case, I was entering the country as a special group representative. So here I would put a citation from an official document of um, made by Finnish uh, border control. Entry to Finland may be permitted for special groups such as representatives of culture, sports and business life event is justifiable for those persons or groups of persons these kinds of tasks include activities essential for ensuring revitalization new growth or long-term operating conditions for a field uh, or uh, activity the applications must be must include justification regarding the national significance uh, significant sorry for um, all the activities and here it's quite interesting so uh, yes the border like any border is obviously a point of confirmation where you see in like um, naked uh, uh, and uh, uh, taken without your like politically naked and taken uh, without um, any uh, proofs of, of um, uh, your status, like whether it would be citizenship or, or professional status or uh, family status and, and, and so on. You need to prove it with documents. But here, that's a completely different story because it's not just your status based on uh, uh, the documents you, you have in your possession, but rather you need to justify your importance and your value for the community and basically your, your, your species. So I would continue that with the, the, the crusader sword on the terms of, of, of living together. So in a way, if you're not important enough, you can be excluded from a, a certain um, community. So that, that with preparation of those documents of my cultural significance, my trip has um, started. But it was, it went, um, the, the whole process was rather unclear. And um, um, so time uh, has passed and we applied the application, but never received any reply from um, uh, the border. So finally I started uh, calling uh, Buddha and they always replied um, like um, the communication was kind of dry <laughs> but uh, well generally polite and uh, they always replied in, in good uh, English and they were quite tolerant I would say so one of our dialogues is the following I see you can't say for sure if you let me in or not uh, but do you send people back often I asked. They replied, oh yeah, lots of them, lots of them. The other time they said, hold on, we'll check your, uh, if your entry permit is ready. And I asked, uh, well, shall I say my name for you to check it? 
uh, and they like, no, we know who you are. So first, the the, the border um, uh, lost its anonymity. So for them, I wasn't just just a citizen passing, but I was someone. And uh, as I mentioned that in um, my my field diary. Um, I, 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 I said, like, I wish I could call my parents that often, which, uh, somehow connected me to, uh, those people in not necessarily warm relationship, but, but kind of, uh, close <laughs> relationship. Like we, we were not locked together, but put together because of the circumstances. So the day of travel, um, uh, arrived um, and um, um, uh, the the only way I could come to Finland was a commercial bus um, because Allegro train wasn't uh, in, in, in operation um, and that was um, um, quite an interesting space because usually these buses they uh, come from a very a very central location but there was the only bus for the whole St. Petersburg for six million people and there were just 24 of us going from this uh, ridiculously architectural ar- architectural ridiculous uh, area which combined like the newly established Orthodox joint giant cathedral and uh, uh, social housing, like panel housing from the t- the seventies, from era of Brezhnev stagnation. So um, I took a chance and, and went there to prospect Bolshevikov. Uh, Twenty four people slowly filled the bus. They were students, Finns returning home. I remembered um, a woman in a long fur coat with a little dog. Everyone wore masks uh, and sat at a social distance from each other. Passing by empty embankments and red brick factories, droning in fog, I was thinking about where I would spend this night. Finland, Russia, Turkey, what to do with meetings, colleagues, and a non-refundable expensive ticket to Moscow, actually via Istanbul. Maybe my colleagues could come to Istanbul instead. Uh, Well, I finally uh, got the the permit. Uh, It was achieved um, when um, uh, I was uh, at Borderlands already at um, city Viborg, near Russian-Finnish border, eating a French dog and being very happy. So, um, uh, but when we got to the border, it was sunset already, um, a very dramatic one, like um, red light almost. The checkpoint, um, uh, and, and here I should say that it was um, the Russian checkpoint to uh, exit Russia first. It was empty and uh, it looked like no one expected us there. Every interview would my bodyguards was taken very seriously and um, it was well detailed. Uh, they closely inspected us and our belongings. A young man who brought an Arduino had to explain how it works and um, um, reconnect the, the particles of, of um, the gadget. Finally, it was my turn. I understood that I and my assistants made a strategic mistake because we had all of our attention to um, rules how, how can I enter Finland but not how I exit uh, Russia. Border uh, official, um, that was a lady, she signed. Oh, you don't have a translation of your documents, do you? I friendly offered her to read them together. Uh, they called the head of the checkpoint. He explained that I could enter only for the job because they don't let people with 
uh, humanitarian purposes out. Do you have a contact? He asked. Of course, I replied. At the same moment, I realized that um, the research stay was a part of my fellowship and I actually signed a contact before. Show it, said the lieutenant, nodding his head to my phone. I searched for it among a long correspondence between me and American colleagues, a hotel in Nairobi, tickets to Maxi, Stigler's, better Stigler's tax, and then I found it. Uh, you don't have um, a second signature here and your responsibility is not clear. What do you actually do for this contract? Uh, well, presentations, work in progress, dissemination, framework. It was so useless for him. He took a photo of my phone with a contact on it. Maybe I should send it to you by email, I suggested. We don't have an email, a Russian border. Uh, Russian border doesn't need one, probably. The lieutenant and his colleague left. It was a shift change. They denied the entrance of two passengers of our bus. One of them was a woman who went to marry a Finn and she was crying. Um, it was really terrible to see her cry because it was her second or even third attempt. Uh, bodyguard sent them back to Wiburg. Everyone left. I found a copy of the contract with both signatures and laid down on a stand where they usually inspect luggage. The lieutenant returned a couple of times and took more pictures of the contract. Finally, he gave me my passport with a stamp back and let me um, go through the checkpoint. I returned to the bus F, if, F, sorry, as if it was uh, full of my good old friends. Passengers greeted me cheerfully and congratulated me. At the border, they let people, um, at the Finnish border, they let people inside in fives. It was completely dark outside. We were the last in line, me, an old man uh, with a crimson sail face and gray beard, and the guy in with Arduino and an old lady. She was the last to leave the bus. Oh, my heart breaks because of all of this, she said. I got to have to smoke to calm it down. She sat and sat on a parapet. The old man almost began telling the story of his unsuccessful baptism, a huge pope that injured his back in a Finnish hospital, but then just suddenly stopped. He kept quiet for a moment and then they started singing an old Finnish song together with the smoking lady. Finally, they let us inside the checkpoint. In two hours, I left the bus near Helsinki Art Museum. Once we had an exhibition there, but it was in another life. Helsinki was empty. The square in front of Amas Rex Museum looked like the surface of another planet under the purple lights. So um, um, that, that was my first uh, impression of uh, being tested under these new rules of travel while um, explaining arts to some people who doesn't who don't really treat it seriously and um, uh, proving my, my cultural significance and um, my value as an academic in this new Darwinist um, society. Um, here I want to contrast it with um, another story uh, which is also personal but um, uh, the, the, the main line here is love story. So, um, uh, and I was, if I, I would make a title for it, I would say, um, love is not tourism. Um, and that's the story of Masha Ivasenka, who is, uh, an inter, uh, independent researcher, 
um, and an interpreter. And um, that's that's uh, a story of uh, her and um, Yuri. They met um, on, on, on Facebook in 2018 and then started the relationship between um, Russia um, and Belgium. Um, and then in 2020, um, he bought the tickets uh, to St. Petersburg in February and March, but as you know, World Health Organization announced the pandemic. Um, Marsha writes, uh, it was scary but fun. While the whole world went on quarantine in April, we spent every day on Skype cooking and watching movies together. I was learning Dutch and hoped that the pandemic would end by the summer. But nothing changed. The borders were still closed. I had permanent exam anxiety. It was so scary when you don't know where you will see your boyfriend again and not a single consultant can help. In, in August, Abhazia opened the borders. We went uh, with my friend to relax. I checked COVID-19 statistics and uh, open countries list every day. I couldn't relax uh, in Abhazia and wrote a desperate uh, Facebook post about it. Meanwhile, love is not tourist movement spread on Facebook and uh, other social media. Unfortunate lovers separated by the pandemic demanded authorities around the world to allow partners to reunite. And, uh, well, if I, I can add to this, um, make them a relationship something essential, not like tourism. By September, Europe introduced essential travel certificates. However, Belgium delayed uh, adopting them. Turkey opened in September for Europeans, and we decided to meet in Istanbul in late October. We spent a marvelous week there, even though Yuri didn't like the city. We agreed to meet in Belgium for New Year, and uh, when I received my certificate, uh, receiving an essential travel certificate was a quest that I failed because it couldn't prove my intent to return home with employment or real estate certificates. We celebrated 2021 separately and agreed to return to Istanbul in, uh, in February. There we spent only a week together again. By some stupid accident we arrived at different airports I landed at a new airport one hour before Yuri came to Sabine Gohim. He asked me to meet him. I realized that I had only 15 minutes to catch a shuttle uh, and run through the endless airport crying, hunting, repeating, I am so sick of, of all of it. However, I could shuttle on time. The trip wasn't happy. As responsible as a responsible Belgium, Yuri signed the declaration of oath uh, to enter um, Red List countries. It means that he came to Turkey only to see me um, and not for tourism. Since Istanbul embraced his codes in public transport, we could not travel or behave like regular tourists, like taking ships, for instance, to, to like boats for, for river walks. Um, after the trip, we decided to get me a cohabitation visa. It would allow me to arrive in Belgium. In May, I applied for a visa. It was approved on the 1st of September and I came to Belgium on the 11th. We lived together in total between August 19 and uh, August 21st. We spent only three weeks together. It was my story of meeting.
during the pandemic. So that, that's quite interesting how, again, uh, one should prove certain status to cross the border and how border actually has an impact on someone's behavior, like uh, Marsha's partner, Yuri, couldn't actually enjoy his life with Marsha in Istanbul because um, um, he, he didn't come for, for fun or something he could um, call tourism, also basically a normal life, like taking, taking boats for fun rides. Um, other than that, he, he, he was imprisoned by, by the status uh, of uh, his travel. Of course, the few borders and uh, new travel have they they have a lot of similarities with how border is constructed. And here I would have a look at um, a wonderful book by Shahram Hasravi, um, um, an Afghani Swedish anthropologist who wrote a book on illegal uh, travel. Uh, like uh, hugely made on his own experience uh, of um, uh, crossing the borders in uh, eight, uh, in late uh, 80s. So uh, I would read and comment on a few excerpts from uh, the book. Like uh, in the opening section, he writes, one cold night in late February, 1987, I stood on a gravel road, which was the border separating Iran from Afghanistan. It was around midnight, deadly silent and pitch dark. If I take a step, I thought, I will be somewhere else. When my foot touches the ground on the other side of the road, it will be not the same person. If I take this step, I will be a legal person and the world will the world will will be never sorry and the world will never be the same again. The and another one the picture is taken by an X ray camera on the border between nation states. It exposes those invisible, the people without papers on the wrong side of the border, the X-ray image show the naked white bodies on the black back, on the black background, a silhouette of human beings. Metaphorically human bodies are displayed also naked of their political rights. That's something George Agamben would call uh, the naked life, which differs from politic uh, politicized form of life explic explicitly represented uh, in the notion of, of citizenship. So, um, like, again, the, 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 the borders is the place of authority and uh, the power balance is uh, always shifted and power is granted to um, those who check but also according uh, to the, the brilliant book uh, by Hasravi uh, by, by those who, who are confident with crossing the borders who are experts like um, smugglers who's got their own networks and um, the whole economy of crossing the border. So they have uh, those people who recruit new clients, uh, those people who provide uh, the documents or bribe uh, the police departments. Uh, and then um, if we take uh, a border crossing and as power, as I said, uh, the client is um, always uh, those people who has got lots of power um, and um, 
because he, he tells the story of, of those clients, smugglers, who's been left alone uh, while crossing the border, who's been raped, who's been uh, blackmailed, and uh, whose money was just taken. Um, to continue on um, uh, this economy of illegal, illegal uh, border crossing, it, it's quite interesting that, uh, well, he says that uh, the rates for border crossing are not fixed. Um, that's a citation. They increased by the week and sometimes by the day, like shares. The rates for an illegal journey depended on global politics and um, events. For instance, the death of uh, the president of Pakistan, a plane crash in August um, 19, 1988, caused by the raids to assault in the day. Uh, and uh, then he, he continues with a very, uh, well, shocking fact. I would say that, so like first he crossed the Afghani uh, Iran uh, border and then the next one uh, uh, to the border to India and from India he tried to travel somewhere, uh, to uh, the west and uh, uh, but he couldn't go to the desired destination because uh, uh, they, they stopped uh, the, the, the traffic there uh, but he was uh, offered other destinations, like um, he compares uh, himself with a friend, um, and well, the citation, he had $500 more than me, and today he's a Canadian citizen living in Toronto, and his children's mother tongue is English. And I am a Swedish citizen living in Stockholm, and my children's language is Swedish. US, 500 US dollars decided our lives uh, so differently. So, um, as I said, uh, crossing border is not just uh, a risky adventure for, for a day even without uh, direct dramatic consequences, it has a trace of crossing border frames, biographies, and um, among participants of my study for this lecture, there were a lot of artists and researchers who decided on their academic or cultural careers because of border crossing, um, opportunities. Uh, well, um, it looks like um, we actually arrived in the UK at the moment and uh, uh, not in the train. So, not the train. So, um, um, it looks like I should finish quite soon, but um, I, I want to, I mean, obviously that's a desperate lecture and uh, that's our third attempt uh, making it but it looks that we, we are making it and looks like uh, through this some other people can be heard so I, I, I want to finish with giving like a sign of hope and showing not only those issues of uh, borders and border crossing that are uh, about inequality, power, uh, power disbalance, but also um, I want to take a different um, approach, different take at, at the borders and uh, here I'm quite inspired with the perspective of uh, symbiosis and uh, neighborhoodness and uh, uh, I want to mention um, the project that's been uh, uh, implemented together by uh, the Pittsburgh colleagues, Moscow colleagues, Alexander Barozas and uh, Olga Brednikova, 
and um, uh, it was called uh, the layered cake of neighborliness and uh, one of research stream it was um, uh, devoted to all kinds of relations between um, Russian uh, it was devoted to Russian Finnish borderlands and uh, uh, close relations of uh, Lepirante Vyborg and uh, Imanka Svidagorsk and for these cities they were not just neighbors but they shaped uh, everyday urban experience uh, shared both in imagination of people but and and uh, an old type of interaction um, and uh, exchange which is lasting uh, under COVID um, uh, as I believe so um, uh, by taking these ideas of uh, living closely living together I will also um, add one more story to uh, the lecture, which is a story of um, uh, a UK based, of a UK based uh, researcher uh, who is from uh, Belarus. And while being a student uh, uh, in Belarus, he lived in Minsk but studied um, in Vilnius. And uh, once uh, he went to Vilnius for the exams week but being very young he didn't realize that his visa has uh, expired and he was taken out from uh, the train to to Vilnius, to Vilnius by um, uh, Lithuanian border officials but he didn't just uh, be alone so they uh, provided with his some juice and even entertainment. Uh, it was an action movie with Jean-Claude Van Damme. Uh, but then he had to find his way back to Minsk, to Belarus. And uh, what he did, he, he tried to catch a Russian train coming to Kaliningrad uh, via Lithuania uh, and via, uh, via Belarus, but he did have uh, the right currency to buy a ticket. So he was there being just a bachelor student alone at the borderlands, but um, uh, some help came suddenly. It was um, um, a company not but not of smugglers but uh, those people who were uh, familiar with the borders it was a taxi driver his friend and possibly his uh, girlfriend with a bright makeup and, and blonde hair somewhat like me today so she looked at him and said, Are you poor Emma boy? You like my son. And she actually bought a ticket and they sent him these bit drunk uh, party people living in the borderlands. They showed kind of unusual kinship and um, he was taken by uh, by them like 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 their their son or, or um, maybe a younger sibling so um, he was scared and, and sent back to uh, Belarus uh, safely um, one thing uh, that was missing though I, I, I hope I, 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 I'm really sure that there were many things missing in this lecture because it, it's very short uh, but one thing is important here, so the, the, the location itself, the, the English Channel or, or La Manche, which uh, for centuries was uh, as, as borderland, um, was uh, provided very dense history of uh, both co cooperation, um, struggles, fight, uh, well, 
think maybe one of the recent points is fishermen's fight for fish that can be taken out of the, um, the channel. So, um, yeah, it wasn't considered uh, too much because uh, there is uh, the border, uh, their border, like very iconic version of it, but also air border. And for me, it was rather taken by as an imaginary uh, border from uh, between Russia and the UK. Like if we could have like a cultural border for uh, all kind of unusual uh, purposes. So that's why uh, I want to give uh, more voice again to um, unusual um, research outcomes of academics and, and continue um, with a poem uh, by a um, now UK-based researcher, Alexandrina Vanke. Um, it's called um, An Imaginative Journey in the Pandemic World. I am on my way to St. Mount, St. Michael's Mount. The train is moving from the north to the south of England. I see green fields and fast flowing hill streams. But then I cross the English Channel, or La Manche, as they say in France. And I'm thinking about uh, people who cross it day by day, risking their lives. And where I'm going to St. Michael's Mount, or Mount Saint Michel, as they call it in France that welcomes pilgrims with the rise and falls of tides. 18th of March, uh, 2021. Well, here I should stop myself, but I want to announce uh, the, the second lecture, which will be more into uh, Russian travel uh, in terms of transportation, and um, it will be with you uh, very soon, in a few days. So um, I hope you, you, you stay with us and um, watch the second one as well. Thank you.